Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video I have this Linksys Cisco switch that it is a 1 gigabit switch. I know this has been operating for more than 10 years continuously. It was in our business and I tried to connect it now it, it looks like it resets or drops out of the network every few minutes. If we power it up LED lights up properly like there is no problem at all. Now let's take it apart and uh, see what might be wrong. We probably are looking at some faulty capacitor after all, after all these years. Now in order to disassemble this the front is uh, clipped here so if we insert something and lift we get this piece out and from the bottom side and there we go the front is off now in order to take the back side there are two clips on each side here and here I don't know if there is any way for you to see I don't know if I can see them maybe from here and there we go there is one and there this is the other one and then the top slides off wow we definitely have some bulging capacitors you can see the tops here those are stone brand I've never heard it in my life so these four are 470 25 volt jobbies I am going to remove the PCB and that lifts up as you can see they have some protection for the hang points very nice touch and here is our simple PCB we can see from the coils here that we have a couple of uh, switching power supplies that these capacitors do the filter out of curiosity let's try to test them and we can see that they look good actually but of course there are many in series so we will never know if we don't disconnect them let's check those two as well so there we go it's a 417 and it has only 157 and the other one wow this has high ESR and very low capacity we will test them when we remove them just to see the actual values now I'm going to fire up the scope I have the power connected to the switch and the oscilloscope is on just to take a look at the ripple current on this capacitor look at that about 3 volts peak to peak so this thing was obviously not working the other one looks 
much better still I don't know about a couple of hundred millivolts now I'm going to do desolder these cups let's disconnect the power and replace them of course so unfortunately I only have these tall ones 470 35 volts which will not fit in the case but we need to be a bit creative um, I will put them on their side and we should be just fine the distorting station is hot I want to apply just a bit of flux maybe we want to take a look at this one as well just a bit of flux on the capacitors and let's try to desolder them and let's just take a measurement of our capacitors Oh wow, that's funny. So nothing there. So this definitely look damaged, they cannot even measure. Nothing there as well, so let's do a new one out of curiosity and there you go so I want just to take a look at these two and these two if they need replacing it's always a good idea of course to replace all of them are 85 degrees actually and they are absolutely fine okay let's do a check on these ones as well the tiny 47 ones those are fine as well let's check the other one also there we go a bit high on the ESR so for these ones I found my good old trusty FR Panasonic capacitors that I'm going to use. So I'm going to solder the old one here. As it is just fine. Of course it is always good practice to replace all the electrolytic capacitors if you know that the device has been operating for so many years. Here we are, everything is soldered back together. Let's apply power. 
and hope for the best. Do a final check of the polarity of everything. And there we go. Now let's take the same measurement as before. Which was at this capacitor here. It's still about one volt, but it does look much healthier. Maybe let's get that one as well. So let's put everything back together. This goes here. 